welcome to the video lecture series on Hadoop testing. Today we are going to discuss about the roles and responsibilities of Hadoop testing. So let's get started. As a Hadoop tester, you are responsible to understand the requirements and according to the requirements, prepare the testing estimations, plan the test cases, get some test data to test the test cases, involved with the testbed creation, executing the test plans, defect reporting, defect retesting, daily status reporting, and test completion. The first thing that we are going to discuss about is test strategy. Once we have a proposed solution to our problem, we need to go ahead and plan or strategize our testing plan. We may discuss about the automation strategy that we may use in there. We may discuss about or plan about the testing schedule that depends upon our delivery dates. We may discuss and plan about the resource planning. The automation strategy, as uh, I have already discussed, is something which is going to help us in reducing the manual effort required in testing the product. The test schedule will be important because it will ensure a timely delivery of the product. Resource planning will be crucial because we need to plan how much man hours we need in our uh, testing and how much Hadoop resources or the uh, resources from the Hadoop cluster that we need to execute our test planning. Once we strategize our testing, we need to go ahead and create the test development plans. That includes creating test plans, creating test scripts, which will help us automate our testing, and also identify some testing data, which is going to be used in the test plans and help us execute that, those test plans. Once we are done with test development, which includes creating test plans, test scripts, and test data, we go ahead and we start executing those test plans. When we execute the test plans, there might be certain scenarios where the actual output is not as per the expected output. Those things are called as defects. Whenever there is a defect, we need to test those defects out and we need to create and maintain the matrices for those. All these things fall under the next category, which is defect management. Defect management include the bug tracking, bug fixing, and bug verification. Talking a bit in detail, whenever a test plan is executing against uh, is executed against any of the product that we have, and as soon as a particular bug is identified or a defect is identified, that defect needs to be reported out to the developer, assigned to the developer, so that he or she can have a look into it and start working on it. As a tester, we need to track the progress of the bug. We need to track that if the bug has been fixed. And if the bug has been fixed as reported, we need to go ahead and we need to retest it and verify that it is closed. Once all the bugs are fixed and closed and verified, we need to go ahead and we need to deliver an OK tested product. Before we deliver the product, we make sure that the UAT is completed successfully. UAT stands for User Acceptance Testing. We make sure that the installation testing and the requirement verification is done properly. That is, the product that has been delivered, that is about to be delivered to the client or to the end user, is as per the requirements that have been mentioned in the software requirement specification or in layman language, the requirement document. The steps that we have discussed are very much generic. Be any of the testing scenario or any of the testing approach, we are going to use those steps, those phases to test our product and deliver the end result, which is an okay tester product. Let's go ahead and discuss this thing in a bit of detail and correlate it with the Hadoop testing. We know that Hadoop is something which is used for batch processing and we know that ETL is one of the field where Hadoop is used a lot. ETL, if you do not know, stands for Extraction, Transformation and Loading. 
I'm going to discuss about this process in a bit of detail when I'm going to explain this test plan or the test strategy for my Hadoop product. Now in this scenario, I'm assuming that I have like four different data sources. Operational system, CMR and ERP are the DBMS or the relational database management systems that I have. And I have some flat files which may be logs, which may be files, which may be records or whatever as my data sources. I will I might be using scoop and flume or whatever particular tool to get the data from the source into my staging directory which is the first phase of my process which is called extraction. Once the data is there in the staging directory which actually happens to be HDFS the Hadoop distributed file system I'm going to use a particular scripting language such as peg to transform that data. That transformation will be according to the requirement that I have. Once the data is transformed accordingly using whatever scripting technology that I have, I will be loading that data into the warehouse. From the warehouse, that data will be used for OLAP analysis, reporting, data mining or for analytics. Let's go ahead and discuss about that on all which all phases I can use the Hadoop testing. The first phase will be the extraction phase. In the extraction phase, I'm going to get the data from my source databases or from flat files. In that case, what I can do is I can verify that all the data has been copied successfully and correctly from source to the staging directory. That may include verifying the number of records, the type of the records, the type of the fields, etc. Once this data is copied to the staging directory, I will go ahead and I will trigger the second phase which is transformation. In transformation, I will have some business logic which will act on the copied data from the source systems and will actually create or transform the data into the required business logic. Transformation may include sorting the data, filtering the data, joining the data from two different data sources and certain other operations. Once the data is transformed, I will go ahead and I will have test plans ready which we are going to discuss in our subsequent videos and we are going to check that we are getting the output as expected. That all the outputs that we are getting are meeting the expected output and the data types the field values, the ranges, etc. are something which are falling in place. Once it is correct, we can go ahead and we can load the data into the warehouse. Once again, we have this third phase, which is the loading phase, where we can actually check that the number of records from the stage and to the warehouse are in sync. They might not be similar, but they are supposed to be in sync. The type of the data which has been transformed is in sync. And post that, we will be using that data for OLAP analysis, reporting and data mining. And these are the, I'll say that the last layer of, of, of our product and in that case we can have uh, subsequent or you can say that uh, test plans available for all these layers. Whenever we get some data from the source into destination, we always need to make sure that only authenticated persons have the authorized access to the data. Now what do we mean by both these terms? To understand this thing, let's get the things in perspective and jump back to the previous slide. In this case, I was getting my data from the source RDBMS engines and from flat files into HDFS. That phase was called extraction. Let's discuss about authentication in this particular manner. There are certain businesses which have data which is restricted by its nature. Let's talk about the type of the data which we call as PII data from US industry. PII stands for personal identifiable information. Any information such as date of birth, SSN, cell phone number, email address, address etc all falls under PII. This data is restricted. This data cannot be shared with everyone. 
the data should be shared only with the persons who actually need it the mo most and who needs the data for some actual processing having this check in place having this first line of defense in place is called authentication for example if you are using a laptop and you have windows installed there you might have some user account created on your windows and there you are applying some password this way only the person who has the password for uh, this particular user account can log in into the windows this way you are going to safeguard your data from theft or unnecessary access the second layer is authorization for example you have now have two different accounts on your windows operating system one user account is your user account which is the administrator and the second one is the guest operating uh, guest uh, account the administrator has the right or the authorization to do every kind of operation say installing the software removing the software creating new files deleting the existing files etc while on the other hand guest might not have all these accesses now the guest has the authentication to log into the system but guest do not have the authority to delete the files create the new files install new software or delete the existing softwares however the guest user account because being authenticated has the right to read the files which are created and use the softwares which are already installed that is the authentication and the authorization testing in this case whatever data that we have in hdfs or in any of the file system we need to check for the authentication and the authorization of the data thank you and have a nice day